So hi, Micro Puncher here again, and this is gonna be a stereo microscopy video because I received um, yeah a question, another question from uh, one of my viewers, and I would like to share this question with you because uh, he or she would like to have some advice uh, concerning the buying of stereo microscopes. Just a small introduction to get a feel uh, for what I do. I run a Facebook group, which is a spider identification group in the UK. I am a keen photographer helping identify spiders and record my findings. I want to go further and actually see what I'm learning from books. The spider anatomy is a real interest of mine and I was wondering if you could help recommend a beginner or amateur stereo microscope to help me with this. Short comment here, you probably do not want to have a beginner stereo microscope. I think uh, your demands are already a little bit more advanced here. But let's go on. I'm hoping for the following should be binocular, it should be adaptable for improvements if necessary later down the road, there should be camera connection to show my findings to the group unless using your phone down the eye lens is good enough. My budget is around 200 to 400 pounds and I know it's a big ask for a small budget. I did notice your recommendation of the Swift 380T. This looks great with the phone holder as an add-on. This would be enough for my group, but what confuses me was whether this microscope was a stereo microscope and if that's important to carry out detailed observations. Any help or recommendations would be great. Thanks in advance. Thank you for the question and I think uh, I'm going to add a few more points here. I'm not only going to talk about the differences between stereo and compound microscopes very briefly. I made separate videos of uh, this um, as well because there seems to be a little confusion here. Um, and then also in, on your sheet you uh, mention um, the, the whole issue about uh, connecting a camera. Um, I would like to also add a few more points. I would like to talk about the brand of uh, stereo microscopes, the size, um, the ability to zoom and also the type of illumination or lamps uh, that you can attach, if any at all. Okay, maybe you want to use ambient light. So I'm gonna talk about uh, these um, aspects here as well. And I'm gonna uh, start off uh, with the very first uh, point is in that is the issue about compound and stereo microscopes. There is a fundamental difference. Um, very briefly, if you want to identify spiders or if you're interested in, in um, identifying insects or minerals or maybe some other uh, invertebrates like worms and so on, uh, then these uh, are fairly large uh, organisms. Uh, plant parts, for example, they're fairly large um, and they're opaque. This means they don't allow light to go through. So you have to use a stereo microscope for those and you simply take the object as it is and you put it under the stereo microscope and then you can look at it and you will get a three-dimensional stereoscopic image. And I think the reason why this is sometimes confused with so-called binocular microscopes, binocular compound microscopes, I've got one here on the side, it is because they too um, have two eyepieces to look through. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit here so that you see. Okay, um, so this here is a compound microscope, but there's only one objective down here. So the image that is picked up down here is split uh, into two uh, parts here, and then uh, both eyes will receive uh, the same picture, and that means you do not get a stereoscopic image, and you do need a microscope slides, like I have over here. Um, yeah, you need microscope slides uh, to be put on the stage here and then you can look at the object and the object has to be very thin, it has to be very small um, and you cannot do that with a spider because most likely you do not want to dissect the spider um, and put it uh, under the microscope but you would like to take the whole animal and look at it and then maybe maybe later on you want to release it again. Um, so this means that those compound microscopes are not suitable for you so we're going to completely forget about them uh, right now, okay? So I'm just going to completely move it out of the way because that's what you do, don't want, okay? So what you need is you need so-called uh, stereo microscopes and I've got um, a smaller one here um, and they look like this. Um, the similarity to binocular ones is that it also has two eyepieces but each eyepiece will receive a different uh, picture and the picture is upright because in here there are prisms that turn the picture uh, right, side, right side up. If you look very carefully down here, I don't know if you are able to see it, no you can't, so I'm going to open this and going to take it off. Up, 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 up. Okay, you can see that there are yeah four 
lens elements in here um, and as a matter of fact um, two of them are always used uh, for uh, observing and then when you when you what you can do is you can uh, change the magnification and then the other two are gonna be project uh, gonna be used to make an image in here okay so this one here um, yeah that's the way how you change magnification and the total magnification goes from 2 times 10 makes 20 and 40 times okay so that is basically the um, quick difference, the important difference between stereo and compound microscopes. And um, another thing is, is, as I mentioned, is, is that you get an upright image because um, you want to be able to manipulate the object that you're actually looking at. And this is not really an issue with a, with a compound microscopes. Okay, so that is basically one thing. Um, and uh, the second uh, uh, point is now the following um, about the modul modularity or adaptability or upgradability. And here I got to be very honest with you. This is pretty limited on the stereo microscopes anyway. I mean, what do you want to upgrade here? There is really nothing um, so much that you can improve here because this is uh, functional out of the box. However, if you want to buy spare parts, um, I don't know, with different eyepieces maybe. I don't know why you would do that, maybe when they break. But one of the things that is important uh, for long-term use is if you want to uh, have a, uh, maintenance and if you want to have a large resale value, then of course this could be a consideration concerning the brand. Okay, But uh, generally, um, upgradability is not so much an, of an issue for stereo microscopes. Services, okay, um, even though most of them are actually pretty much service free and if you take care of them um, I mean 50 years they're gonna gonna be fine okay. unless unless uh, you need to clean them um, if you're living in an area where it's very moist uh, and humid then there is uh, like in many cases the danger of fun fungus growing on the optical systems and then you might be yeah it's good to have a company around that takes it apart for you if you're not able to do that uh, to get it cleaned yeah but adaptability not so much of an issue a really important point is now the uh, ability to attach a camera here in this case um, I can as you already mentioned um, basically attach a camera a mobile phone either here on, on front yeah, like like this okay with a, some kind of a mobile phone adapter and then of course you can use this also for viewing several people can view um, but um, it's not quite as uh, convenient uh, especially if you uh, want to take pictures um, okay um, and uh, for th uh, this in this case you would like to probably have uh, a a folder tube connected here as well and in, for your case I highly recommend a, a stereo microscope with a folded tube and the reason is is because you already mentioned three different uh, reasons you want to take pictures okay uh, because you want you're running a Facebook group um, you want to show it to other people and if you have a folded tube then you can directly take the image here from the microscope camera and uh, get it into a screen so that other people can view so it's uh, I don't know maybe if you uh, have a small a uh, museum or a place where you would like to show um, the spiders to a larger group of people uh, in an ex exhibition maybe or in a small fair maybe in a school uh, maybe you're invited then this is really really important that uh, multiple people are able to see it at the same time um, of course you can also directly connect the camera here on the eyepiece it also works um, but uh, I think uh, it's uh, if you want to have people looking through the eyepieces and also see uh, then see what this person is seeing a uh, photo tube is, is important and the third reason I don't know if you've thought about this but that is uh, focus stacking and if you want to do that then you're combining uh, different images of different focus level together into one image uh, which is uh, in focus all the way through uh, and I would highly recommend that you get involved in this uh, because the images can be quite spectacular uh, because uh, a spider or any <laughs> organism for that matter that is focused all the way through is really immersive uh, yeah it, uh, I just want to show you now uh, two pictures that I made myself uh, just recently uh, of a wasp uh, for my other YouTube microscopy YouTube channel here they are and I basically stacked several images uh, to, together and the, it's uh, quite impressive to see the whole head uh, being in focus here um, so for this reason yeah please uh, that's my concrete recommendation get yourself a stereo microscope with a folded tube so next point is the following I'm gonna turn the camera over here look this is my other stereo microscope and I'm gonna talk about this one here right now is the photo tube. I'm gonna uh, disconnect the adapter here and um, this photo tube here is uh, extensible and uh, basically the purpose is, is that you're able to focus uh, by raising and lowering this here so that uh, the image is in focus when you look through the eyepiece and also when you have it in camera and then you can simply 
uh, turn the, the screw and then it's fixed. However, when you do focus stacking, what you want to do is, is you want to use the camera here for focusing. The reason is, is that by moving it up and down here, you change the focus of the different levels, but you're not shifting the image horizontally. I'm going to explain why this happens when you use the other focus down here. And you're also not changing the size. When you use the regular focus knob for focusing, I'm just going to tilt the camera again. Uh, okay, this one down here. Okay, when, I turn, when you turn this down here, then what happens is the following. Then you're also changing the size uh, because the further you're away, the smaller it is. And another thing that happens is, is because there are two objectives and only the light of one objective is actually used for the camera. Um, and because this objective is not in the central axis, when you raise and lower it, uh, then you have a horizontal shift of the image. And then the software, the stacking software, must remove that and calculate it away. Um, so it's possible, and I've been doing this, uh, of course, but it's actually much better if you are using the focus, uh, if you change the focus by lifting it up and down. Disadvantage, this is not very easy to focus, and it's not as stable, and it's a little bit wobbly. Okay, as you can see here. So this is now a, a request for the microscope manufacturers. Can you guys please design uh, a microscope where you can raise and lower this in a very controlled way, maybe by turning a collar here or something. Maybe something like this already exists, okay? But this would be a real advantage for focus stacking. So this is uh, simply uh, something that I would like to uh, mention here. And I would like to now move on uh, to the next point, uh, which is uh, the, the budget and general and brand. Let's, uh, let's combine those two points. Uh, you said from 200 to 400 pounds. Yes, this is gonna get you a microscope uh, like uh, already like this one over here. Um, this one costs around, I think 400 euros. Uh, so it's less than uh, the 400 pounds of your maximum budget. Um, concerning the brand, this brand here, and now I, I need to explain this a little bit is Amscope. However, however, this microscope here is manufactured in China. It's imported and then sold under different brand names by different companies. Um, so this is a really important thing. Uh, if you go, for example, to the Chinese website AliExpress.com, uh, you can buy those microscopes also quite cheaply and get directly imported from China. Um, and you're going to see that they look pretty much very similar or almost identical. And the reason is, is because there are just, it's just a handful of companies that are all making those microscopes and then they're exporting it and the different importers are simply slapping their own brand name on top of it and then they're, they're selling it um, so the people often ask me well which brand should I buy and I tell you at these low cost for these low cost microscopes it really doesn't matter a lot because many of them are the same anyway they just rebrand it so um, if you want to now get a really a real brand microscope a real brand and I'm saying one from Olympus Zeiss Nikon or Leica one of those big micro microscope manufacturers they will make their own microscopes but the the cost difference is significantly higher uh, but you have you get a microscope with a higher resale value and also with a service so you can send in the microscope and they'll do the cleaning and servicing for you also of course costs money no question um, so research institutes usually buy microscopes from these large companies because they just want to have a reliable device and if there's a problem just pick up the phone and they call uh, the service uh, uh you have service company and they come in and they fix uh, the microscope okay uh, for amateurs and uh, it's probably not really something that is uh, needed or necessary um, so that is uh, the thing for 200 to 400 pounds you're going to get a very very decent uh, microscope already um, now concerning the size uh, you i've already talked about this you can already see that there is a size difference here um, a pretty big size difference um, however the magnification goes up to 40 times for this one here and 45 times here. So this the maximum magnification is pretty much the same. So what's the difference? The difference is, is that uh, the large microscopes, the, uh, this one is larger because it has, of course, um, also a, a, a continuous zoom. So physically it has to be larger. But the large microscopes do have the advantage that they are, I think, are more um, convenient to use because you simply have more space um, yeah, to work with. So if you want to manipulate the objects, it's easier to manipulate them. I'm going to show you here again. I have to take the camera. It's easier to manipulate them on such a large surface here. Okay. By the way, you can also change this around to change the background color. That's another issue. Okay. Um, but it's easier um, to manipulate it here than, for example, yeah, over here, which is much uh, smaller.
okay? Um, so do consider this um, as well. Um, and uh, another thing that is kind of related to this is here, this one has a lamp built in uh, down here. Um, so there is an uh, illumination from, from the bottom uh, going up. And there's also a lamp here at the top. Um, and this large microscope, it came without any lamp at all because I decided to buy myself a so-called ring light which can be controlled which can be added uh, yeah um, beneath here down here um, and the reason why I've uh, done it is with a ring light is because um, I wanted to have light from all sides and the lamp here only illuminates it uh, from one side and this casts a shadow and I considered it more convenient for photography if this light coming from all sides less shadows um, and more even illumination also a stronger lamp but honestly yeah it depends on what you actually want to do sometimes the shadows enhance the, uh, the sense of depth as well and can be also quite attractive so yeah but um, I'm using uh, this ring light and I'm quite happy uh, with this and I had to get it separately um, I also used to, uh, before I had the ring light I used uh, this here for actually for illuminating uh, from the top um, yeah it's also a possibility and uh, the lamp that is built in down here Okay, uh, I never really need it uh, because uh, most objects that I look at are opaque and also in your case when you look at, at spiders for example there's no point in illuminating it from the bottom because uh, the spider is going to appear like a black shadow and you're not going to see anything anyway. Um, so the lamp light from the bottom is also useful if you want to look at slides but I don't do that with a stereo microscope because I've got another microscope to do that and uh, the objects are anyway uh, way too small in my view uh, for the stereo microscope. So you see um, it's a combination of factors and another thing that you should consider is, is uh, that you see this base here it's pretty uh, high up okay so it's not quite as convenient um, uh, of, of actually when you're dissecting something you want to have I like to have my hands resting on on the board and it's not so easy if it's it's higher up so it's, it's you see usability feet aspects uh, play a role here as, as well so last comment and that's also an interesting one that you might want to consider or not is, is that uh, most microscopes do not have a continuous zoom okay that's a continuous zoom which goes from a total magnification of seven times to 45 times and this means when I zoom in I can it will magnify it and of course it will not stay in focus I have to refocus also at the same time but um, yeah, it uh, allows me to do a little bit uh, more composition. So I'm a little bit more flexible, but I would say the real advantage is not so much the continuous zoom, but simply the fact that the lowest magnification that I have is seven times. It goes from seven to 40 times. Um, so this means I can actually also look at fairly large objects while this one over here to times 10 is 20 times is the lowest magnification so this means uh, the lowest magnification here um, magnifies already quite a lot um, so for me it's not the continuous zoom that's so much of an advantage but simply the wide range of magnification that I have um, yeah I'm, I'm just saying um, I'm not uh, saying that this is now uh, absolutely important but I'm gonna also tell you disadvantage of this now um, and the disadvantage is is that uh, every every time when you have um, some kind of a uh, additional optics uh, like continuous zoom and so on the image quality um, suffers a little bit um, yeah um, so this means uh, for a better image quality you probably need some kind of fixed uh, fixed uh, magnification uh, lenses however the image quality is still pretty good here okay um, I did however see that uh, there is a lower image quality ironically through the photo tube um, so basically the light of, of one of the objectives down here of the left eyepiece is by pulling in and pulling out this lever here is redirected because it pushes in a mirror out here and I do have a slightly lower image quality here the reason being because I think those additional mirrors and prisms that are in here to redirect the light they might actually reduce contrast a little bit so it's not a big thing uh, not a big deal um, and, uh, it works well and I've been using it uh, but uh, ironically I get slightly better images uh, by taking pictures through the eyepiece 
kind of kind of strange a little bit. But then I'm using this here because I need a um, yeah a, a good and stable way of, of taking videos. You see, every microscope is somehow a compromise. Really, um, there is absolutely no perfect uh, perfect system. Yeah. So last uh, suggestion that I have uh, in case uh, you're f you, because you're in f into photography also uh, do consider maybe uh, going into macro photography and buying yourself for your camera a macro objective. Um, they're also not cheap. Um, I'll be honest with you. And maybe mounting a camera um, also on a, on yeah, something yeah like uh, yeah like this here um, on, on, on some kind of a, a system so that you can then also use a camera directly for doing uh, macro uh, photography. Now when you go online uh, to uh, shop for stereo microscopes you're gonna see that there are also quite a few of them that uh, are not mounted on, on, on a plate on, 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 a, on, on, on a base but that have to be fixed directly to a table. Those uh, stereo microscopes, sometimes they have, even have the same, uh, same microscope head, uh, but those stereo microscopes are often used for um, electronics, uh, for quality control in electronics, to check that um, all of the connections are, are fine, and, and for other quality control um, aspects. Um, yeah, up to you, why not also use those? Uh, because um, if you're going to be using an external light source anyway, just like a ring lamp uh, or this here, it, it doesn't really matter a lot. As a matter of fact, I also considered actually getting one which is directly mounted to the table and not to a base uh, like this one here. But honestly, it's it's really a question of taste and a little bit how you uh, how portable the system should be and uh, how stable it should be. Um, and if you want to actually move the uh, microscope head out of the way, so if there is if it's mounted on some kind of a large um, boom. Uh, then you can swing it away and, and, and push it back into, you know, pull it forward uh, you know, much more easily. Um, and then you have the whole table surface of your desk um, available to do work. Um, so, but that is uh, essentially something that you might also consider, but I'm just saying here, that's the reason why they exist is, is because uh, um, they are used for quality inspection, quality control, and then you need a lot of, uh, yeah, you have sometimes very large objects that you actually want to put under the stereo microscope and you need a little bit more freedom in moving uh, the stereo microscope head around. Um, ultimately, I would say the best stereo microscope is the one that keeps you happy the most um, and then one that you're going to be using the most. Uh, every device, every microscope has its own trade-offs and I think that uh, it depends simply a little bit on, on, on the way that you yourself um, are using the microscope, whether you're going to be happy with it or not. Many people ask, um, well, which one should I get? What, what's the best brand? What's the best model? And I say, well, uh, that's difficult to say the best microscope is the one that you will be using the most often and the one that you enjoy using the most and the one that uh, yeah after all it is a hobby for for most of us okay and if you're in research uh, then usually it will be decided for you anyway uh, which microscope you have to use and then you have more detailed specifications um, and then often the company will put together a microscope model for you uh, based on your specification and on your research needs um, so you see that the approach is, is quite different here here. Wow, uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it um, as that. Um, yeah, I, if you have any questions or additional comments, please uh, do feel free to, to uh, write them into, into the comments section. I would like to, as always, thank my patrons and GoFundMe supporters. I would like to also invite you over to visit uh, the links that I have in the description below. I will have a whole bunch of other microscopy related products, uh, projects, I wanted to say, not products. Um, I also have an affiliate uh, Amazon shop. Yeah, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.